It's time to talk LSU baseball with Mike Scarborough and Kendall Rogers of D1 Baseball. This is Batter Up. All right, another episode of Batter Up. Kendall Rogers with D1 Baseball in the house. Mike Scarborough with Tiger Bait, of course. And um, where does this LSU baseball team go from here? Is this uh, what we saw last weekend and then the loss to Southern Monday night? Is that what rock bottom looks like? Um, I think we're about to find out. Um, I don't know how easy it is. I keep, it's like a broken record, Kendall, when we talk about these. I, I'm like, <laughs> how, how do you get well with who you're playing in the SEC each weekend? Vanderbilt comes in th another Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday series. And um, I don't know, uh, what's your take on what's happening here in Baton Rouge from from, from your uh, perspective? Yeah, it's not great. I mean, here here's the thing. And let, let's just address this elephant in the room. Uh, you know, Jay Johnson came out earlier this week talking about how cell phones are going to be banned in the locker room and things like that. And as someone who knows Jay really well and someone who certainly – Thinks the world of, of his ability to run a program. When I hear stuff like that from coaches, a red flag goes up. And it's not a red flag with Jay. It's not a red flag with a singular player. But what that tells me, there, there's a red flag in terms of just the overall kind of feeling psyche around that clubhouse. And so that has me a little concerned, I'll be honest with you, that he feels he has to go to those links to kind of get this team focused. Um, you know, here's the thing. If you look at the last two national champions out of the SEC, Ole Miss, or Mississippi State and Ole Miss, they've each struggled out of the gate the next season. Uh, Mississippi State, two years removed from ma even making the tournament. They haven't made the tournament since they won the championship. Ole Miss, probably not making the tournament again this year. So that's two national champions out of the SEC that probably will not make the postseason two straight years in, in each situation. Now, LSU is not in that dire of straits, but just gives you an idea how difficult it can be after winning the championship to, to really kind of zone in. And I think the one thing, you, you know, you mentioned it in, in the lead in here is, you know, trying to get right in the SEC is not easy. So when you're a championship team and you lose a lot of key guys, like you don't have a lot of time to kind of figure out what you need to do uh, in the Southeastern Conference. Like you can be in a hole like LSU is right now at two and seven. So, um, are things not very good? Um, that's that's accurate. Or is this season dead? Absolutely not. Um, I think if you look at LSU, there's still plenty of things on, on the plate for them the rest of the way. Starting this week with Vanderbilt, let's not forget Vanderbilt. A couple weeks ago, they went to South Carolina. Honestly, played terrible. Got swept by South Carolina, who I think is just a very average team. And so, it's right there for them. But I mean, when you look at this team overall, here, I mean. We don't even need to go much deeper than this, right? I mean, if you look at LSU right now in the SEC, they rank 13th in batting average in conference right now at 243, just ahead of Missouri, by the way, who's at 144. I don't know how in the hell you have a 144 batting average. Missouri has three home runs as a team. Um, and then you look at their pitching staff. Uh, right now it, it ranks uh, uh, fifth from the bottom at, at a 7.50 ERA. So – if you put a 7-5 ERA together with a 243 batting average in conference, yeah, that the combination is not great, man. So, like something's going to have to change. I think the big thing for me when I look at LSU and I and I said this this morning to somebody, um, it seems like they're one, they're one of those teams who can't figure out who they are. I mean, one day they're going to hit and the, and that on the, that day they're not going to pitch. One day they're going to pitch and then they're not going to hit. And then that's just the way this team has been. So, they need to find a way and I don't know the exact formula. Uh, that's why I'm not a coach, but like they need to find that that formula to kind of put all those pieces together uh, before it's too late. Because if, if you lose a series this weekend and you got to go to Tennessee, who, by the way, you can bet your ass that Tony Vitello would love to get LSU reeling in Knoxville next weekend. If you lose that series this weekend, you're looking at two, what, uh, three and nine, and you got to go play Tennessee in Knoxville. I mean, at that point, we're talking about this team potentially missing the postseason because. I mean, let's just assume you lose a series at Tennessee. Not a, not a given, but let's say you lose that series. I mean, that pathway to the postseason, given the remaining schedule, is incredibly difficult. So, I mean, Kendall, uh, you're I, getting to the point now. You're getting to the point now where they they actually probably need to sweep a few series. Yeah, and, and the good thing is, I mean, I I'd have to pull the schedule up, but I mean, I was looking at it the other night, and like, like the 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 back stretch is not terrible. Um, and they Missouri do and Auburn. In. Yeah, I mean, you get Missouri and Auburn. Although Auburn's scary, man. I, I saw them twice. They're not bad. Against, 
Yeah, against a and they can really hit. They can't pitch. So if LSU can just figure out the, the hitting before they face him, they'll be fine. Uh, and then, of course, they get A&M at home. But um, at the end of the day, uh, season over, absolutely not. Um, need, need to kind of boogie a little bit? Absolutely. Well, look, I, I know you're having some fun with the, the cell phones and, and stuff, but, you know, but whether it's uh, – yeah. It's post games, uh, you know, interviews after last weekend's uh, tilt and yeah. um, Southern, and then of course we got him yesterday. Uh, look, you, you can go back to you know how two years ago the, the season ended at Southern Miss and what the issues were. He's never deluded about what he's working with and what his challenges are. Um, I, you know, yeah. you, you know, there's some LSU fans out there that uh, get mad because he. He doesn't uh, maybe throw players under the bus like Maneri did. Um, that he's going to protect his guys and and and. But you can it, it, you don't have a hard time reading between the lines about what he's really thinking and what the problem. yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, so here's the thing about LSU. It's kind of funny. I was just kind of diving through this as you were talking. But when we, I think in the first podcast that we did, we we talked about what was the key for this team coming into the season offensively, right? Because at the end of the day, if you would have told me that Michael Braswell would be hitting 302, I would have been like, oh, LSU must be killing it. But here's the thing. Here are two guys that you and I kind of talked about that were going to be big keys this year. Jake Brown, a uh, talented freshman at Lake Charles, has been injured. He's been banged up. He hasn't been a factor for LSU. Paxton Kling, we we said it like a million times, like he is kind of the X factor for this team coming this season. He's hitting 188 with pretty much no power production. So you have two guys there that were both really good in the fall that we thought would be, you know, A, Jake Brown making this impact, Paxton Kling would be a good breakout guy. Neither of those things have happened. That's really hurt him because he, even though Braswell, you know, a guy like Braswell's hitting, you know, 302 or Milam's hitting, you know, 305, they haven't combined one home run. So – yeah, you like the fact they're hitting the ball, but I mean they're not they're not giving you much power production. At least yeah, you thought standpoint. you thought Brady Neal coming off injury was poised to have a big, you know, big year. Um Yeah, and then a little yeah. bit of power for him. But I mean, you don't want I mean, when you're when when you're looking at Brady Neal is like the guy that you really need to be your dude, like I think you're having some issues. Cause I mean, I think he's a solid player, but I don't think he's a guy that you know you're gonna build your whole lineup around. Well, of course, uh, these batter up, up segments each and every week are brought to you by attorney Kenneth P. Haynes. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from Kenny. Kenny Haynes is a proud 1989 graduate of LSU Law School with a passion for justice. Kenny stands out as the only lawyer in the state, board certified in both appellate practice and family law. Drawing from 34 years of trial experience, Kenny has navigated the most complex aspects of real people's lives. If you need help in Northwest Louisiana with a family issue, legal issue, or a highly skilled trial attorney, call Kenny, 318-222-2100. And speaking of winning, Kenny would like to recognize our 20 2023 national champions and congratulate coaches Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson. Go Tigers! And Kenny is the official, unofficial attorney of TigerBait.com. And I tell you what, on our message board this week, uh, he's had some pretty salty uh, message board posts with a lot of oh length and specifics about this LSU uh, baseball team. So LSU fans are going to want to check that out on, on TigerBait.com. But he did have a question for you, Kendall. He says. Uh, pitching, is this a case of too many arms having Coach Yeski spread too thin, or are these guys just not that good? He says it seems like guys are not ready for the situations they're being called upon to perform. What is your take? Uh, I mean, my take is there's there's some guys here who just haven't been very good. I mean, you know, Thatcher Hurd, again, a guy that at the end of last year uh, I felt like would be a big-time impact guy this year and be a frontline starter. You know, his ERA is over six. You know, uh, you know, we talk about the transfer report on how important that is. You know, Justin Lohr comes over from Xavier. Uh, you know, he's got a, what, a ERA, well, like almost around seven. And they get at Ackenhausen, uh, ERA around six. So those, those things add up, right? I mean, those, those are three of your better bullpen arms or two of your better bullpen arms. You know, Hurd obviously throwing out the bullpen a little bit now. But those are two your better bullpen arms uh, with pretty you know pretty high ERAs. I mean, on the flip side, you know Griffin Herring's been really good, uh, but yeah, I mean the pitching's got to get better. But I mean, 
you you can pitch all you want, but if you're going to hit 243 in the SEC with how many good offenses there are, you're not going to win many games. Well, and, and he said it also yesterday. He needs his stars to at the plate be stars, and that, that's yeah, that's not happening. And and if those guys get on track, then he feels that the uh, the other guys in the lineup uh, will follow suit. But um, Vanderbilt, uh, what uh, can LSU yeah. fans expect to see from the Commodores and and uh, maybe some keys to the V. Uh, uh, what what is LSU facing here? Is this is this a team that LSU can absolutely win two out of three from? Oh, uh, they can. I mean, the thing about LSU that's really interesting, or excuse me, Vanderbilt that's really interesting, um, is they're not going to wear you out with home runs. Uh, you know, Alan Espinal was a home run hitting machine in non-conference. He hasn't hit one in the SEC yet. Uh, Vanderbilt only has four home runs in conference play so far. So it gives you an idea of just – you know, how, how little they rely on that. You know, Jonathan Vestine has been really good for them in conference. Espinal is, you know, even though he hasn't hit home runs, um, is still hitting, you know, 333 in conference. Troy Laniv has been really good. Uh, and the guy for me that I kind of keep an eye on this weekend is RJ Austin. You know, he's an electric player, can really make things happen both from a power standpoint and once he gets on base. Uh, I really like him. Then on the mound, you know, Bryce Cunningham has been a breakout star for them. Uh, he was a guy that, you know, we, we thought was a solid arm, but he's kind of progressed into a premier prospect this year. 26 strikeouts, six walks in the SEC so far. Um, he's going to get up to 95, 96 with his fastball, pretty good off-speed stuff. Carter Holton, uh, a talented lefty for them, you know, has been really good this year too, and especially in conference play. 27 strikeouts and, and 20 innings of work uh, for Holton. And then the other guy for me that's really intriguing um, is Grayson Carter. Uh, they've kind of moved him, whether it's in conference uh, in, or out of conference, they've kind of moved him around. Like sometimes he starts, sometimes he comes out of the bullpen. But Grayson Carter is going to sit 98 to 101 with his fastball. And the big thing with him is if he can command it, which he has done this year, I mean 15 strikeouts, one walk in conference, if he can command that, like he's virtually unhittable. So that will be the big key for them uh, is just, you know, what do you what do they get out of him? But um, – you know, other than that, I mean, again, they're not going to wear you out offensively, but what they will do is they're opportunistic and they've got enough guys uh, that can that can do some damage. I would keep an eye on Espinal and R.J. Austin this week. I think it, those are the two guys for me. Those are the guys that are the, kind of the straws that stir their drink, so to speak. Well, I don't know. I haven't uh, checked out uh, your site this week, but uh, when you start talking about who are the most disappointing teams in college baseball the, this year, um, I'm imagine you've got LSU in there, but who's also in in in, in their same company? Ironically enough, Wake Forest. Um, you know, Wake Forest fell just short of the national championship last year because of the Tigers and because of you know, you know, you and I talked you know off the air about this about Louisiana kids because of guys like Trey Morgan. You know, think think of how important now guys like Morgan and JT. Uh, and Kay Beloso worked to this program. And so you're kind of seeing what they're doing without those guys. And we're also seeing what Wake Forest is doing without the Rhett Louders of the world or the Brock Wilkins and guys like that. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're like LSU. They're hanging off for dear life in the bottom of the top 25, uh, but they haven't been very good, man. Like Chase Burns, the Tennessee transfer has been awesome. But Josh Hartle, who was a preseason first team all American uh, has an ERA around seven teams are hitting him at a three Oh eight clip, uh, which is incredibly high uh, to say the least. And so Wake Forest and, and LSU have, have both been two of the two of the larger disappointments. But what's interesting about them is I feel like both of them have the ability to be elite teams. Um, I, I know that's I, I know LSU fans will laugh that I think LSU can still be an elite team, but the the, the pieces are still there. It's just can they put them well, there before it's too late? Well, you're the guy that I'm going to pose this question to. Absolutely. Um, I don't know what year in the last twenty that do you think is the best ever for SEC baseball were one through yeah. six or seven were the best teams that you ever saw competitively. Um, you know, we always, we always talk about how many teams SEC teams are in your top 10, et cetera. But where is this year kind of that year? And where if you're a team like LSU yeah. that's struggling to, to find an identity and get your, your lineup, right. Where you're just, you can be lost in the wilderness just because everybody's having special seasons. No, you could. I mean, you know, you and I were talking about it, but I mean, like I saw Auburn twice against A&M last week, and they're a good team. I mean, A&M won two out of three in that thing, but it was a dogfight, and they can really hit. I mean, they have two of the best hitters in the in the conference in the middle, and Ike Irish and, and Cooper McMurray. So when you have Auburn, 
who is one and eight in the SEC, and I'm looking at their offense and going, man, I love their offense. That gives you an idea of just how good this league is, you know. And and you know we've talked about it before, but if somebody takes a step forward, somebody's got to take a step back. And guess who's taking a step forward this year? Kentucky is kind of has surprisingly has continued where it left off last year. Uh, Georgia, granted, I, th- I still think the jury's still out of them a little bit, but you know Georgia. Uh, with Charlie Condon doing what he's doing, you know, four, 41 with 19 bombs, they're better. And so if all these teams are better, somebody's got to take a step back. And unfortunately, like so far, one of those teams is LSU. Absolutely. Well, everybody, if you're enjoying this uh, report with Kendall Rogers, please do me a favor and hit that like button and spread the word about these and share it. And uh, Kendall, before I let you get out of here, please uh, tell them how to get on D1 Baseball, your promo code, and, and what all you've got uh, going on at uh, D1? Yeah, man, just a 24 season at checkout. Um, it, it'll get you 24% off of any subscription package we have. Um, you can see us on YouTube on the D1 Baseball channel as well. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, the, the biggest thing for us is we have a lot of midseason stuff out this week, midseason report, midseason top 100 college prospects. We have uh, our updated player power rankings out. So, uh, still, still a lot of LSU representation as player power rankings, but you know, I, I guess my message to LSU fans is, yeah, it's not great right now, but if, if there's a program in college baseball uh, it, that has a history of being able to kind of flip that switch, it would be LSU. So, should yeah. be a fun series this weekend. If they win the series, they're kind of right back on the horse, so to speak. Real quick before I let you go, there's of course D1Softball.com. How much do you keep an eye on that? And uh, with this LSU softball team's doing some really no doubt, things. yeah. They're doing a lot of LSU coverage. Actually, Justin McLeod, who is kind of would be kind of the equal to me on the softball side. You know, he joined D1 softball uh, before the season, uh, and he's actually been to Baton Rouge a couple of times this year uh, to see uh, Coach Torina's club and whatnot. So, yeah, they're having a hell of a season too, man. Yeah, um, LSU just uh, what uh, beat the Aggies? Yeah, so, swept them, uh, right? Yeah, I think yeah. Sweat? Yeah. Didn't they sweep a And M and Texas? Hmm. There you go. So, that'll that'll that'll, uh, that'll be a good day for Betrina. Yep. All right. Uh, check out D one baseball. Thanks again, Kendall, and we'll, and we'll do it again next week. You got it, brother. Be good, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you.